Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So, I'm from Britain, and you can see I have a very British name. And I'm here tonight to propose an idea that possibly our queen has afternoon tea with who could possibly be your next queen as she moves back into the White House. Of course, I know you guys don't appreciate tea. Um, <laughs> well, had to be done. So, I wanted to come here tonight and really just spend some time talking to you guys about something that I do care about. Because when I arrived in America not so long ago, about nine months, I didn't have this experience. I didn't come in on a boat, look at the Statue of Liberty and go, wow, you know, America. At the same time, you know, it is great to be here in Boulder. Um, <laughs> and the other thing I want to talk about, so immigrants is being one key thing. The second thing is entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurial immigrants. Entrepreneurs are people that come in, they organize uh, and build businesses that have high financial risk. And you guys, some of you guys, you start in the crowd, probably know what I'm talking about. So immigrants and entrepreneurial immigrants uh, are clearly welcome in America, uh, based upon the news that I've seen. Um, and you can see me that I'm, I'm barely fit enough to do pedestrianism, never mind climb that wall. So I'm here really to talk about some of my own struggle in this. Um, because as I said, I sort of came to America as an immigrant entrepreneur, trying to build great things here in this you know, startup hub that we're all living in. And yet I was faced with a whole bunch of challenges. And I spent the last six years living in the developing world doing all sorts of interesting things. Uh, in Armenia, um, with the people that I was living with for the last five years, 90% of the population earn between two and $10 a day. My mother-in-law, just to put it seriously, only earns about $4 a day, which might be good for a mother-in-law, but anyway. Uh, so I was here in uh, Silicon Valley with uh, an Armenian friend. He said something that I thought was really interesting, something that you'd only hear from an international person. This is an international perspective. He said, wow, people spend five bucks on a, on a coffee? And I said, sure, I mean, it's five bucks for a coffee. He was like, huh, I wonder like, if, if, if they had to pay 50 bucks for an app, how that would feel for them. And basically putting it into that proportional sense of buying something relatively useless, quite often, um, you, know, at, you know, half your day's wages, for example. And I thought that was really insightful. And then I sort of thought a bit more, and it's like, you know, two thirds of the world are out there right now, and they don't have access to the internet quite yet. And also two thirds of the world are sitting there and living on about $10 a day. And at $10 a day, two thirds of the world, this is just ripe for innovation. This is where these people can come up with new ideas. First generation Americans have built all of these companies. So people that have come in and done that. And some of these are really impressive companies with the latest in innovation, things that have changed the world that I'm sure you guys can all agree. And hey, you might even use some of these things. One in 10 Americans are employed by uh, immigrants founding of the, the founders of the company. And more than that, and interestingly, I guess, a side, side note, another one in 10, one in 10 Coloradans are immigrants, which I thought was interesting. More than half a million immigrants live in Colorado. But immigration isn't a super simple thing. You know, I walked here uh, as being a Brit, and still as a Brit, it's a painful process. There's all these acronyms they throw at you, H1B, E1 visa, EB1, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's a, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare to go through this process. Two weeks ago, I was on a call with the White House. Uh, Obama just announced that um, he is actually putting together a rule to allow immigrant entrepreneurs to come to the country and build great startups. And I thought this was news worth sharing. The proposed rule looks a bit like this. Uh, entrepreneurs will get to stay in the US for two years. They have to raise more than $345,000. They have to own more than 15% of the company, and the company must be less than three years old. But it's still a huge deal for people like myself who want to come here and build startups. The challenge is, is that that rule hasn't yet been put into power. So I know that we've been asked to vote already, but I would suggest going to this website, which has only had about 30 comments so far. Let's get all 800 people in this room and show people that this room is welcoming to immigrant entrepreneurs and everything they can bring. I mean, just imagine Colorado, the center um, of the US anyway, dragging in all these connections that it has and really celebrating what is, what is great about this country, and even more so, of course, Boulder, because Boulder's awesome. But, and that's what the red, white, and blue is about, right? Freedom, equality, the opportunity for the American dream. That's everything the red, white, and blue should be about. It's everything that you guys stand and believe in. You know, these are three colors that I, even I can get behind. And it's three colors <laughs> that you guys should understand where they came from. So those three colors you guys get behind in 1776 were formed directly after that same bunch of tea that you threw in the harbor. But anyway. Just, just a side point. So this is the America you guys represent, right? <laughs> and as you're here doing that, I'm here to you know, embrace myself as an entrepreneur, go forward, and go for this America that we should all be proud of. Thank you. Yeah.